Let's walk through how to prompt for multiple characters in Midjourney step by step. The version 6 update improved the flexibility of Midjourney quite a bit and there's a lot more you can do now to generate multiple characters. But there's still some limitations we need to talk about. And thanks to Nick St. Pierre for inspiring this video, make sure to go and check out his Twitter account. Step 1 is setting the scene. We can start with a basic idea of what we're looking for like two people are sitting at a poker table. That's simple enough, don't be too specific at this point. We just need a general idea with as few details as possible. It's also helpful to introduce a medium for the image. I want a photo, so I'll add shot with Kodak Portra 400 film. To get a wide image, I'm going with a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, and I also use raw style to make sure that Midjourney follows my prompt as closely as possible. So this image is reasonable, but I think we could actually be a bit more direct with what we want. I'm looking for a front view, and to keep it interesting, I'll prompt for a man and a woman sitting together. Remember, at this stage, we just want to frame the subjects in the context of the surrounding environment without being too specific with the details. Once we have the basic structure of the image down, we can start to adding more specific details. This is the fun part, where we get to play around with different ethnicities, clothing, colors, accessories, and other details you can think of. Here's an example of just how fine-grained the prompts can be. I specifically prompt for a young Ethiopian man wearing a light blue button-down with a Rolex, and an older Asian woman in a yellow turtleneck and dark blue pea coat. Notice how I asked for the man to be on the left and the woman to be on the right. You can tell Midjourney exactly where each subject should be in the image, and this actually helps with image generations. Also, notice how I'm using natural conversational language in the prompt. In Midjourney version 6, avoid using sporadic words like man in blue shirt, and instead try using more natural language in your prompts for the best effects. Midjourney is able to generate all the details we prompted for, from the race of our subjects down to the specific clothing details. Even the Rolex is placed on the man's hand. Let's try another example. We'll ask for an older white man on the left in a black tuxedo and a younger white woman on the right in a white t-shirt with blue polka dots. She's also got blonde hair. This time, we'll ask for some interaction with the man looking at his phone and the woman looking directly at the man. The details look correct and the amount of control you get is amazing. The clothing is exactly what we asked for, even down to the blue color in the polka dot shirt. The interactive part is lacking though, you'll notice that the woman doesn't look directly at the man in these photos like I asked for. Something worth noting is that Midjourney is still kind of limited by their training datasets. For example, it's hard to get certain ethnicities of people to be in the same image. Here I prompted for a young Asian man and an older Irish woman. Even though the clothing details match my prompt, it ends up generating two Asian people. This was supposed to be an image of a black man and a Hispanic woman, and the AI generates an image of two black people. This is something you'll have to play around with to know what types of combinations are possible at the moment. Let's test out interactive movement between our characters a bit more. Here I asked for the man's arm to be around the woman's shoulder. Midjourney makes them lean against each other, but it was hard to get the specific arm around shoulder motion that I wanted for the most part. In some instances, it gets mixed up. I prompted for the man to have his arm around the woman, but funny enough, Midjourney does the opposite and puts a woman's arm around the man. Here's an example where I prompted for them to be holding hands. Again, we expose some limitations Midjourney still has. It can generate really fine-grained details in the appearance of the subjects. But interactions between subjects are still a struggle, especially as you add more and more details. If you prompt for them to do separate things like holding items, that can work slightly better. This prompt asks for the man to be drinking a cocktail and the woman to look at her phone, and both actions do appear to be in the image. Make sure you also experiment with the different locations and backgrounds for your subjects. Whether that's going for a jog in Arizona with red rocks on the side of the road or jogging next to a scenic lake, the background you use can add a lot to the atmosphere of the image. Batman and Spider-Man are sitting at a bar. Batman is on the left wearing a khaki peacoat. Spider-Man is on the right wearing a gray hoodie. Spider-Man is pointing his finger at Batman. Take note of the details here. Batman, Spider-Man, at a bar. 
Batman in a khaki peacoat, Spider-Man in a gray hoodie, Spider-Man points finger at Batman. That's enough arguing. Time to shake hands and make up. Even though there's some limitations in the types of interactions that are still possible, it was fun to create scenes for some of my favorite characters. These guys look like they had a long day at work. A concept you should know is using callbacks in your prompt. This just means referring back to your subjects as you add more and more details. A man and a woman sitting side by side at a circular table. On the left is an older white man with a gray mustache wearing a light blue button down shirt. On the right is a younger white woman in a black cocktail dress. They're in a sunny outdoor patio with vines on the walls. The older man is eating a garden salad and the younger man is eating a turkey sandwich. Notice how I'm referring back to the man and woman multiple times as I may add more details for each one of them individually. Callbacks are really important to use so that Midjourney knows exactly which subject you're adding details for. It's easy to switch up the medium that the image is generated in. Usually it works better if you add it to the start of the prompt. We can use oil paints which have rich bold colors and a wide range of textures. Watercolors which are more transparent with less saturated colors. Digital art that you may have seen on Instagram. Pencil drawings and other styles you might think of. If you want to add more characters, just follow the same formula. Remember that it's really important to specify in your prompt where each subject is located relative to each other. I want the Hulk on the left in a red tracksuit, Black Widow in the middle in a blue shirt, and Tony Stark on the right in a black leather jacket. It always looks like superheroes are having a bad day when you generate them in mid-journey. Let's review what we've learned. Step 1. Setting the scene. Use a basic description of the general image you want to generate without adding in too many details. Step 2. Adding the details. Explore different clothing, colors, textures, ethnicities, age. Midjourney can generate really specific prompts, especially for clothing and colors now. Step 3. Character interactions. This is still very limited in Midjourney. I try to make Batman and Spider-Man punch each other, but that just doesn't work. Step 4. Experiment with different locations and backgrounds for your subjects. And Step 5. Try out different mediums for your images. Use different styles like photography or oil paintings for different visual effects. Now I know people want to know about generating multiple consistent characters. We'll see if that's possible when Midjourney releases its in-painting feature. So make sure to subscribe for that. Also, if you want more ideas for your prompts, go and check out this prompt guide I made here.